Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here representing ppccourse.com and jefflytics.com. And I want to talk to you about single keyword ad groups, which is all the rage when it comes to AdWords management. And there's a reason for it because it makes you more efficient and there's some benefits and some drawbacks of this approach. And so if you've ever thought about using single keyword ad groups, you're going to want to listen up here. If you have no idea what a single keyword ad group is, you're going to want to listen even more because we're going to talk all about it. And as you can see here during t-shirt week, this t-shirt comes from the AdWorld Experience Conference in Italy, which is one of the best AdWords conferences in the entire world. And it's happening in April in Bologna. And so you might want to check that one out as well. Let's get into our video about single keyword ad groups. So let's talk about single keyword ad groups. Single keyword ad groups. How many keywords should go into an ad group? This is a question I get all the time in my training courses and a question that we all want to know. Is there a magic formula for how many keywords should go into our ad group? Now, before I answer that question, I want to start out with some quick AdWords terminology just to get everybody on the same page and to make sure that we understand what exactly we're talking about here when we say ad groups, when we say keywords, and when we say ads. Let's just get that terminology out of the way. So an AdWords account houses all of your information. So within an account, you can have a campaign. Now, most people just create one campaign, and this is not something that I would normally recommend. A campaign is a place where you house all the settings for what you want to advertise. It's where you put your daily budget. It's where you put your geo-targeting settings and your language settings, as well as the networks that you want your ads to show up on. And so if you want to have just a single campaign that's only in English language, only in the United States, and you have a fixed budget, Perhaps you can get by with one campaign, but most people actually are going to benefit from having more than one campaign. An account should have more than one campaign if there's any type of targeting that you want to do. Even if you're doing a display network campaign versus a search network campaign, you are going to want to have many campaigns in your account. So having just one is a pretty rare occasion, even though when you start out creating an AdWords account, they're going to ask you just to create one campaign. And when you start out creating an AdWords campaign, they're going to tell you just to do one ad group. And actually, I recommend having many ad groups. In fact, I recommend having so many ad groups that you might even reach the limits that Google puts in place for how many ad groups you can have. That's happened to me many times in getting more granular and more efficient with my campaigns. But generally speaking, one campaign can have multiple ad groups. Now, what an ad group does is it houses your keywords and it houses your ads. So an ad group is a tightly knit ecosystem that has keywords and ads. And what an ad group does is it automatically matches your keywords to your ads. So when somebody types a query into a search engine, you make sure that you show up for it. And that's how your keyword shows up. And that's how your ads show up in a Google search result. So an ad group is basically the place where your keywords and your ads live in harmony. Now, as you can imagine, the more closely your keyword matches your ad, the better the experience is going to be for the user, the better experience is going to be overall. And you want to make sure that these things match as closely as possible. And so the function of an ad group is to make a keyword and an ad match in almost a one to one ratio in a really tight ratio to the point where you know that this is going to show up for that. And this is what I call a healthy account structure. What I find is that most beginning advertisers do not implement this type of structure because they're trusting what Google tells them. Google is saying, okay, all you really need is a campaign in one ad group and then you just pick a list of keywords and the keywords they suggest to you are super broad, super expensive, and they're relevant to your website in a loose way, but they're not at all relevant to your ads. They ask you to come up with a list of like a hundred keywords and then they ask you to write one ad as if that ad would be relevant for every one of those keywords. And I'll give you some examples of keywords and how ads can become relevant as we get through this video. But just think about it this way. Do you think that every single keyword should have the exact same ad? If I'm typing in something into the Google search engine, do I want my ad to match my keyword? Or do I just want an, a single ad that says something super generic? Obviously, it's the former. You want your keyword and your ad to match. But here's the thing. Google doesn't want advertisers to be efficient. They want you to be inefficient. And the reason why is because they make more money off of you, especially brand new advertisers who don't understand the ecosystem, don't understand the environment. They want you to be inefficient. So instead of a tree structure for your accounts, Google recommends having one branch. And this is what you look like if you have an account that only has one branch. Now for years, I've advocated for something that I call tight ad groups. And what I call a tight ad group is where keywords and ads match 
closely to exactly. So they either match really close or they are exactly matching the keyword to the ad. A one-to-one -one ratio in matching between keywords and ads because that's what makes you more relevant. Now, this term has been adopted in the industry called single keyword ad groups or SCAGs. That's actually one of the first times I've said it out loud. I just mostly read it out, but a SCAG taking this to an extreme. So generally speaking, I've always said a tight ad group and really a single keyword ad group is the ultimate in tight ad groups. And I mean tight as in a one-to-one -one ratio between your root keyword and the ad that you're showing on the search engines. Now, the reason why this is important, the reason why SCAGs are so popular is because granular campaigns provide the most opportunities to become efficient in your ad campaign. The more opportunities you have to be efficient, the better chance you have of delivering results. So what is a single keyword ad group? A single root keyword in each ad group. Now I'm going to give you an example to hammer this close to home. Say that I'm advertising for my agency course and I'm creating a new campaign. Now if I wanted to have a single keyword ad group, what I would do here is I'd create an ad group called agency course. That is my root keyword. Anytime that somebody types in the word agency course, I want to have coverage there because I'm highly relevant to it. It's even in the domain name. And within that root ad group, we want three keywords. These are the what we call the head terms. And we put the first one would be plus agency plus course. This is called broad match modified. It's a broad match, but it actually has some kind of restrictions on what can actually show up for it. So it's a little bit more protecting than a standard broad match. We also have the exact match and the phrase match versions of this keyword. Now this is pretty straightforward, right? It's basically saying if I'm gonna have an ad group about the agency course, then all my keywords need to be tightly related. So if somebody typed an agency course on a search engine, they see that I have something that's highly relevant to them. And as you go forward, you can build out longer tail terms inside of this single keyword ad group to get more granular. So I might add the modifier online just to see if anybody's looking for an online version of this because obviously it makes things more relevant. And my original agency course still applies here from a relevancy standpoint, but this way I'm getting more granular with my data. And you don't just stop here. You don't just put in like these six words that we have here. You might put in 60 or 600 of them as you look at your different variants. Now I would recommend starting maybe in a more manageable way. Instead of going after 600, I would start in a manageable way like we have here. And then I would mine my search term reports to see the actual results. So this is an example from the AdWords account. I put in things like Google AdWords certification and then it turns out somebody also matched on Google AdWords certification without the AdWords in there. Now you can make a choice. Do you want to put that as a negative keyword? Do you want to add that to your account or do you just want to let it ride? Google certificate. Now these things can be general. As you can see here, people are, even on my broad match modified, they're putting in all kinds of different terms, different things they're searching for. And some of them are good and some of them are not good. And so you can make these decisions and you can add them back into your ad group. And that's what you can see here is you can just add stuff in and match them up with your single keyword ad group. Now the other advantage of single keyword ad groups is you can create ads that match your keywords very closely. Now this is the agency course group. We can see I have a headline here that says the ultimate agency course. So I actually put the keyword in the headline. Headline two, 10X you're a freelancing business. That's not a headline, but that's just basically saying what we do. It's a benefit related headline. Then we have a description. This is just something I pulled off our website. Discover a proven path to becoming a respected and influential agency business. All right, that's giving them the reason why they wanna do this thing. You might want to put a call to action in there as well. I think that's a best practice. I just hastily put this together just to show you this as an example. And then in your path, you definitely want to put in your keyword as well. That's another chance to get keyword coverage. And when somebody types in the words agency course, I'm going to have the word agency course in the headline. It's going to be bolded. And then in the example on the ad, it's going to be bolded as well. Bold is good. People see the bold. It draws their attention. And that matches exactly what they typed in on the search engine. And that is good. That's exactly what we want. And this is the benefit of single keyword ad groups is that we can put these out there, we can manage things in their own little shell, and then we can have a very relevant ad to it. And when ads are relevant, good things happen. Quality scores increase. Everybody's happy to see you. Everybody loves working with you. That's what happens when you have this level of granularity. And then if you want to, you can create your next single keyword ad group just by simply copying this thing and pasting. So what I did here is I just copied the agency course and then I put it into a new ad group called agency training. And then the first thing you do is you update your root terms, but you wanna make sure that you update everything in here. So you, everything that goes from agency course becomes agency training now. And actually you can just do this in a simple copy and paste. 
Google AdWords Editor, which is the tool we're using here, has a simple way to replace text within the ad group you're looking at. It takes two seconds to do this thing, and you can do it for all your different ad groups. And it's pretty awesome. So AdWords Editor is my favorite tool for creating single keyword ad groups. I love it, it works well. And you can create many of these things in a matter of seconds, really, if you just do a copy and paste job and you know exactly who you're targeting and you make sure that everything lines up and the stars align, not very hard to do this at all. Now, what are the benefits to this approach? One, you have way more control over the results. Two, you can easily turn off your poor performers. If something's not working very well, turn it off. It's granular, so all you're doing is you're pausing a keyword and it's out of your life forever. Three, search term reports go into the correct ad group. So the more granular you are with your ad groups, the easier it is for when you mine your search term report to go right into the correct ad group. You don't have to go and rearrange things, move them around. You just put it right into the correct ad group. Pinpoint accuracy of your reporting metrics. I can't stress this enough. You wanna have really accurate reporting metrics because the more accurate you are, the more pinpoint the precision is, when you turn something off, the better you can predict what's gonna happen in the future. Your quality scores increase all over the place, your keyword quality score, your ad quality score, your landing page, everything is much better when you have a one-to-one -one ratio between keywords and search terms and then the landing page they end up on. Ads are always matched to keywords. Number seven, it's really easy to scale this approach when you add new root keywords into the process. Super easy to do it. Just copy and paste. It can take just a matter of seconds within AdWords Editor. You upload your changes into your account and you're ready to rock and roll with doing this. Now, before you go out and rush to do this thing, I need to share with you the bad news. There are drawbacks to this approach. Number one, it doesn't work well with new accounts. And this is definitely from my experience. If you start out with a single keyword ad group and everything is super granular, you will get buried by Google AdWords. They will not give you the time of day. Nothing really happens at all. You don't get bad results, you just don't get any results at all. So don't over-optimize at first. You need to build your way up to optimizing. And that's actually number two. You need to build your way up to this level of efficiency. Number three, without an account history, if you over-optimize, Google will bury you, and not just bury you, they won't trust you, and they won't even let you do anything. And so I wanna make sure that I stress that a couple times here, is that Google will bury you if you over-optimize. They don't like it when people are trying to game their system. They want you to be inefficient, and if they see that you're too efficient, nothing even happens. Literally, nothing happens. No matter what you wanna pay Google, they don't want your money. Number four, takes way more management effort to do this. It does take a lot more management effort to do this when you use a single keyword ad group. And that probably means you need to work with an agency or you need to work with somebody who can handle doing this day to day. So what's my verdict? Well, first of all, this is the only approach I've ever used in AdWords and it works. It's the approach that helped me outperform my competitors by two to three times. Now here's a little brag slide here where I show you the results that come from single keyword ad groups. This is something that Google provided me that showed me exactly how much more efficient we were than other people. Now the way that you read this is that for less money, for 70,000 less dollars, we got over double the clicks for this account by being efficient. So we had 3x the results quite easily using this approach. And it's the only approach that I advocate in my PPC course. Now I don't call it single keyword ad groups, I call it granular, I call it tight knit ad groups. Doesn't matter what term you use, it's important. It is a strategy that works in AdWords. It's what makes you more efficient. Now, SCAG is just a fancy name for efficiency. And I'll leave you with a question. Should you be efficient? I think we all know the answer. Yes, you should be efficient. Yes, you absolutely should. So what do you think about this approach? I would love it if you'd leave a comment on this post at jefflytics.com. I'd love to hear your opinion. Does this work for you? Do you get buried by Google when you try it? At what point do you optimize? What do you do to make this better for you? And don't forget to sign up for our free PPC mini course at www.ppccourse.com.